Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Harris from Plainview High School Robotics. This is Team 101, and today I'm doing our mechanical submission for the documentation period. If you're watching this and you were not Kipper staff, that means it is after our competition and we have published this video. But if you are not in that much larger category, hello to the one Kipper staff that is creating this video. I'm sorry I'm going to be giving a little bit longer of a doc video because I thought I would go ahead and just do an, a little bit of a explanation and complete video that we will put on our channel for the robot. Um, the robot we're going to be looking at today is Nerf. It is our create for this year. And Nerf's job is to grab the yellow cubes on top of the towers and put them in and stack them. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pause and draw and sketch out and explain how we are doing things throughout this round. But we're basically going to go through and we're going to look at the run. I will let the parts list scroll over the bottom while I am doing this. Just so it is not... Um, or maybe I'll let it go at the very end. I haven't decided yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this go, go ahead and run so that we can see what's going on here. But Nerf, in essence, is just a modified shifting parallelogram of BFA. Um, the shifting parallelogram, you'll see it move here in just a second. This servo down here is the lift arm, and it lifts up the shifting parallelogram. And the beam that is supporting the shifting parallelogram is actually a motor that is on this, um, that is connecting to the long metal band that is supporting the rest of the arm. And that's so that we can spin it around in every direction we want and get full range of motion out of that arm. Uh, the reason we do this is because when we square up on this building, we have this chute here that I am showing that is going to be used to when we collect a yellow cube. We are going to create a thread while we are driving back. We put those yellow cubes into this chute that we've created and we are holding them up above the ground so that the bump does not touch. Uh, so that the cubes don't touch the bump while it's driving over, but is one by one going to go to each of the towers and is going to grab these cubes and is going to set them in to the chute. Um, this arm allows, this, this rotating portion of the arm allows us to manipulate the cubes while the robot is uh, driving and sequencing around the board, cutting down time drastically. Um, this is an older version of the run, but we have now gotten the run down to, I believe, 1 minute 45 seconds. Um, but you can see we can actually move around while this arm is rotating. This also allows us to have the chute that we put the yellow cubes in on the back of the robot so that we have more space to fit in the Starbucks and it actually is, just, is a better design for the robot overall. Um, on another side note, Nerf does get Bot Gal in the corner over there as one of its tasks. And so that Bot Gal, Bot Gal helps multiply the points of the cube stack. But, and we use all of our paper and foam board to make the chute. We use foam board on the sides of the chute and paper on the front and back of the chute. We open up our claw so they touch the ground and drop the yellow. The testing for this has gone through many iterations. We wanted to see if this rotating arm design was actually possible. So what we did is we actually took a robot that wasn't sequenced yet at all and just gave it, uh, a, and just set it up against the tower and had the robot grab a cube and try to put it into the chute 50 times. And we kept giving it a new yellow cube and taking the yellow cube out of the chute and we did that 50 times to test the accuracy of the chute. Because we knew that accuracy was going to drop, and you can see it dropping into the chute there. We wanted to make sure that this was accurate. Because we knew that as it was driving, as it was scrambling into pipe, we were going to get jostled, and that this chute drop was going to be a little less accurate. So we wanted to make sure that when we were stationary at least, 
we could get it 50 out of 50 times. And we did, we did. We made this to where I could grab a cube off of the tower and put it in the chute 50 times in a row. Um, the only way this was possible was because of a line follow sensor that we have added. And I will go back to the video where I highlight that. And you can see we have a reset sequence. So this is uh, a little piece of paper this will be changed for the competition to be regulation paper. Right now it's masking tape with just a little sharpie line on it. But um, that is sitting there so that when we spin the arm back, the line follow sensor that is right here can detect that black line. And when it sees and crosses over that black line, it can know exactly where it is and it can reset to line up on the shoot properly every time. The way we do this is we just have a value. We check for change in values until we reach an absolute maximum. We are checking for an absolute maximum using a little bit of math. And once we start going past our absolute maximum is when we know we can go back in or know when to stop once we've gone past our absolute maximum of that value change. Or I guess in this case, it's the value dip. Um, that is how we are detecting that black strip, but that allows us to line up on the shoot perfectly every time and Manipulate the claw Properly that was a big accuracy booster for this robot and then after we did the 50 um, the 50 cube tower test most of the testing after that was conducted just by trial runs and running the sequence over and over again the cube drop we found was very, very precise, and we could get it a majority of the times, but what we had some trouble with was the bot gal grab, because the claw cannot lift, can just barely not lift high enough to grab bot gal. We have to instead lift her up as much as we can and drag her over the edge. So you'll see we have that drag where she clips the edge there. Um, this has not been much of an issue. This has been a little bit of a point of contention in accuracy, but especially since this video, we have updated the robot to get over that lip better or be able to grab onto bot gal while we go over the lip better. But I believe I have reached all of the criteria of the mechanical review submission. So I will not bore the judges who have to grade this documentation submission anymore. Um, and for those who are watching on YouTube, I hope this gives a more in-depth explanation of how our robot works. Um, anyways, have a great day.